was loved by Marx as well. Yeah. <laughs> and the final theory, which is also a simple but sensible one, is the search theory. This makes a lot of sense for, for especially countries like Iran. Search theory says, okay, there is a bargaining between the client to the employer and the employee on how much you should be paid. No? So, <clears throat> for US, the very obvious example of search theory would be people with green card. So, if you, we all know, if you are in a status where you are waiting for your green card, your client can do whatever he or she wants with you because you have quite small bargaining power. You cannot switch from one company to other. And that's, I don't, I haven't seen any paper. I'm very curious to see, or oh, I'm very glad if one can do this research, whether the average wage of people who are on the status of from H1 green card is significantly lower than their mates who are US citizens or who have the green card. What we hear from just, you know, the, the casual conversation is that people say we are being exploited because they know that we are you know, stuck with this client, we cannot move somewhere else, so they can cut our wages as low as possible. This is search theory. Search theory says if you have less options to search for, you would accept lower salary. Now go back to Iran. Think of search theories for men and women. So are the possibilities of finding jobs, especially in the think of industrial sector, the same for men and women, obviously not. So a man who leaves a company can start looking all the factories around Tehran in 60 kilometers. But if you are a, a woman, you can always think, okay, if I get job at this, I don't know, this uh, Eshtehart, which is uh, 80 kilometers away from Tehran, I want to come back 9 or 10 at the PM, it's very dangerous for me. So you have to give up because the society gives you less opportunity. And because of that, you tend to accept the offers with the lower trigger of uh, surplus. And I guess this explains a lot for the wage differences. So the women has the women have less bargaining power because of the social pressure, therefore they accept it quicker than the man who has this more option, therefore the client has to keep the number down. Okay, these are three main theories explaining the gaps. And now we see that the gap is declining. What time is it? How much time do I have? What time is it? I think it's the um, eight forty five. It's 8.45 or 7.45. So I have just 10 minutes. I'm sorry. And I guess I can't cover the power of peer part. We have the room until 8.30. I'm sorry. We have the room until 8.30. Okay. So oh, yeah, it's until 8.30 now. Okay. So why the wage is declining? First, our regulation. The regulation forces bonds so that the clients cannot condition your wage and your gender. The second is intuitive. Job content is changing. So 100 years ago, the workers should use the hammer and you know, work in the factory. Now people are working with computers and, and books and so on. Here, the gender ability is becoming less and less relevant compared to you know, industrial age. There are more opportunities for women's educational attainment. And finally, your point, less stereotypes. So the feminist movement made some job, you know, good job. So that the stereotypes are destroyed. Therefore, the rational discrimination goes away. Okay, I guess we discussed all these things. We come to the second explanation. There is a famous paper, The Engines of Liberation. So this sounds very promising. What are the engines of liberation? The engines of liberation are appliances. So we take the price index of eight major Appliances, I guess it's vacuum cleaner, dishwasher, iron, and stove, some others. I'm not sure they have running water included in this. There is another paper looking at which one was impo more important, refrigerators or bathroom running water. And they showed that running water was more important than refrigerator. But I guess it takes like this eight, I guess I have the next slide item. I mean, see, okay, obviously, very, very trivial thing. The price has declined a lot. The average index of price or affordability for families. So up to here, very trivial. I wouldn't have put it here if it was as simple as this. Let's come back here and think of Baker's model. So what I'm saying is that the price of oven, the price of mixer, the price of 
And what else? Which is relevant for you? The price of all these things in the, in the kitchen. Dishwasher. Even dishwasher, yeah. These are lower than, than 50 years ago. What does it mean when they are no cheaper? So you can buy more. The more, the, the more appliances you buy, what happens to productivity of your home production? It goes up. So go back to the framework we introduced at the beginning. If productivity in one sector increases, what happens? Again, you are, you are away from economic way of thinking. You are keeping one thing fixed and then going to the other one. We agreed to think of trade-off framework. So now you are more productive in one sector, which is home production. If you are more productive in one sector, what do you do? OK. At the beginning, I gave you the example of salary. Spend more time there. Exactly. Not keep the salary fixed. Think of the other way. So I think yesterday, we didn't have microwave or oven or all these things at home. So I could work at outside and earn $10. My salary is the same, but today we have an oven. When I have an oven, I can cook nice, nice cookies and cakes and so on for my family. So one hour of working outside, yesterday it meant me giving up of you know, a simple food. Now it means giving up all these delicious cookies. But theoretically, what should happen then? You should spend more time at home. So we should see like a, a very <laughs> conservative. Very uh, uh, dish washer, you wash your dishes very fast. That's the difference, okay. That's true. You have dishwasher. That, that's one explanation why we don't see this rebounding effect. Otherwise, we should see a very rebounding phenomenon. So if we have more productivity, we will coming back home because they are more productive, they want to produce more. I need one further condition so that this doesn't happen. What's that? Then you have this energy consumption and you have energy consumption. Okay. So why No, this is true, but think of this his dishwasher example. Then my pleasure. What I'm saying, what I'm saying that we should see women working more at home has some elements of truth in it. It's not obviously rejected. I would try to give you some examples. But first of all, what condition I need that people don't spend their all their work at home because now working at home is very productive. You can cook a lot of nice things for your family. If, if you exactly. If you have a saturation in your needs, so I like the example of dishwasher because you don't want to wash your dishes twice. Okay, once is enough. So you can say, okay, the dishwasher is more productive, I wash more dishes. But still there are some elements. So if you have dishwasher, what's going to happen to you? No, think of increasing the consumption. If, if washing the dishes is less costly for me, what I'm going to do? Parties at home. Parties at home. Well, previously, if I invited my friends, I had to spend all night watching the dishes. Now it's just 10 minutes, yeah? Every night party. <laughs> okay, if your consumption does not have the saturation point, then you, you are going to increase it. And I guess in reality, we have both elements. You have some elements at home. I guess irony is like that. I don't think if you know, irons are becoming better irons. You want to iron your clothes uh, every day. But I guess for, at least for Iranian, Iranian family, I guess the cooking technology had this rebounding effect to some extent. During the last five, 10 years, I guess our kitchens are much more well equipped than, than before. And I guess the mothers are cooking much more, cooking these extra side dishes and so on. That's why I guess if you look at the total working hour, of uh, Iranian women, I guess it's much higher than the other countries because they are working outside and inside. So they have the endless leisure. If you look at those professional women, so they walk outside and then they come back and they want to cook, you know, all these nice dishes instead. Okay. This is one phenomenon. I just read the sociologists are talking about why Iranian women are working too much. And I guess one explanation would be this: that now working at home is easy, so you tend to do a lot of things. There are papers who also connect fertility rate to that. So these are recent things which 